A weasel is wild. Who knows what he thinks? Obedient to instinct, he bites his prey at the neck and he does not let go. One naturalist refused to kill a weasel who was socketed into his hand as deeply as a rattlesnake. The man could in no way pry the tiny weasel off and he had to walk half a mile to water the weasel dangling from his palm and soak him off like a stubborn label. And once, says Ernest Thompson Seton, once a man shot an eagle out of the sky and he examined the eagle and found the dry skull of a weasel fixed by the jaws to his throat. The supposition is that the eagle had pounced on the weasel and the weasel swiveled and bit as instinct taught him tooth to neck and nearly won. I would like to have seen that eagle from the air a few weeks or months before he was shot. Was the whole weasel still attached to his feathered throat, a fur pendant? Or did the eagle eat what he could reach, gutting the living weasel with his talons before his breast, bending his beak, cleaning the beautiful airborne bones? We can live any way we want. People take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, even of silence, by choice. The thing is, to stalk your calling in a certain skilled and supple way, to locate the most tender and live spot and plug into that pulse. This is yielding, not fighting. A weasel doesn't attack anything. A weasel lives as he's meant to, yielding at every moment to the perfect freedom of single necessity. I think it would be well and proper and obedient and pure to grasp your one necessity and not let it go, to dangle from it limp when, wherever it takes you. Then even death, where you're going, no matter how you live, cannot you part. Seize it and let it seize you up aloft even till your eyes burn out and drop. Let your musky flesh fall off in shreds and let your very bones unhinge and scatter, loosened over fields, over fields and woods lightly thoughtless, from any height at all, from as high as eagles. <laughs>